The Game of Thrones is known as one of the bloodiest and most shocking TV shows of all time, but it also features some amazing mythological entities, such as dragons and white walkers. It also has a massive ice wall and some devastating green wildfire. So if you've ever wondered about the science of Game of Thrones, you've come to the right place. The heaviest known living bird capable of flight is the Cory Bustard, and it weighs in at a whopping 41 pounds. But this shouldn't discourage the thought of dragons existing, because the heaviest known flying animal ever was the Hatsigopteryx. It had a 39 foot wingspan and weighed in at 550 pounds. So for Daenerys Targaryen's dragons that look to be about 100 to 200 pounds at the end of season 3, they are probably within a decent weight range for flight. But what would happen when they're fully grown? This is where the science gets a little bit tricky. In order for a full grown dragon that weighs 1,500 pounds, it would need a different flying mechanism than currently used by living organisms. An interesting new theory is that the dragons could have used hydrogen-producing bacteria like Escherichia coli and have a storage chamber full of hydrogen that's 14 times lighter than air. This would help give the dragon extra lift to get off the ground. And having storage chambers full of hydrogen could also be responsible for the fire breathing of dragons. If dragons theoretically could have small amounts of palladium or platinum in their teeth, those metals would be able to react with the hydrogen and produce a flamethrower-like effect. Sticking with the fire subject, Tyrion Lannister devised a plan to use wildfire as an explosive in the middle of the Blackwater Bay battle. This extremely hot green fire was almost able to stop the assault by Stannis Baratheon by itself. In the current day of age, napalm is a similar military material that can wreak havoc on the opposition. But the wildfire in the Game of Thrones is actually based on an ancient technology called Greek fire. Greek fire was said to be so powerful that its composition was never revealed to the world. Modern science believes that the composition of this ancient Greek fire was a combination of petroleum, potassium nitrate, and nitroglycerin. These chemicals would give the fire its high temperatures, its explosiveness, and its long lifespan. But in the case of wildfire, trimethyl borate was probably added to give the fire its green color. Now, fire and dragon bones are really important to the Game of Thrones because they're the only two things that can kill white walkers. Now, for those of you who don't know, white walkers are a mythological race that have special powers related to the ice and cold one of which is the ability to freeze anything that they come into contact with. A certain kind of bioprecipitation bacteria, such as Pseudomonas syringae, can actually spontaneously freeze substances that they come into contact with. But the White Walkers don't only freeze animals, they can also reanimate them from the dead and turn them into whites. Now, the reason why we die is because when a certain number of cells in your body die, it sends out a death signal to the rest of the cells in the body. But if this signal were to be targeted by chemicals such as carbon monoxide, it could give our body enough time to replace the dead cells. So after the White Walker kills an animal and it begins regenerating, it could be easily infected with a chemical such as the one produced by the acacia tree. The tree produces a chemical that sends a signal to ants to defend the tree. Now there are other examples of mind controlling organisms, such as Myomisonoma neotropica, which literally tells ants to breed or go kill themselves. So after enough animals are reanimated and the White Walker army is strong enough, they still have to climb a wall. See now this wall is 213 meters tall, 482 kilometers wide, and has a slope of 90 degrees. See now the problem with the wall is not its size, but it's its composition and slope. This wall would put so much pressure on the base that it would actually melt the bottom layer of ice. In real life we do have glaciers that are kind of similar size, such as the Prieto Marino Glacier. If the wall in the Game of Thrones were to exist, it would have to be partially submerged in water, have a much more gradual slope, or be largely composed of rock and have a large layer of ice surrounding the the rock. So anyways, thanks for watching The Element and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button down below.